Hello everyone. Welcome to uh, another episode of the Gen AI CIO podcast. Uh, today we have a special guest. We are joined by Mark Ashworth who is the Chief Information Security Officer at First Bank, a 100 year old bank uh, here in the US. Uh, and this is the this is the first time we have a CISO joining us. Uh, and it was uh, pretty interesting to uh, listen to how banks approach uh, the adoption of generative AI. and and i was really it was fascinating to know that uh banks they don't all operate the same way obviously there are these massive big banks like jp morgan uh chase uh who kind of adopt technology faster and compared to uh regional banks who have a different adoption path uh we have uh, mark uh with us for the next 20 minutes a lot of interesting conversation around how uh, banks look at adopting gen ai what is that uh, key uh, tenets that they look for uh, and how do they go about adopting any technology for that matter so uh, mark uh, ha- comes with very rich experience uh, in from the it industry he's uh, he started his career as a developer uh, and then went on to lead several uh, uh, security uh roles uh in the it teams of large uh, entities uh he's with uh, he's been with first bank for more than 6 years now and comes with a uh, massive uh, uh knowledge around all things security in a bank uh, he was just telling me offline in the call about uh the multiple teams including the fraud uh, detection team the cyber security teams reporting into mark so so i hope you will find this uh session really informational uh, and also have uh, an idea on how uh, cust- I mean, banks and other financial institutes approach uh, gen a adoption mark thanks for joining us today uh, this is the first time we have uh, someone from uh, an an it executive from a bank joining our podcast mm-hmm. uh, as a very sh- I'll, i'll shoot the very first right <laughs> the question right away so how does the bank look at ai uh is it is it uh, super scary uh, how do you embrace ai or have you are if you are already using ai probably if you could throw light on how you use ai today that'll be fantastic yeah so I, i think it depends on how you look at ai if you're looking at it from a a tool that is looking at large amounts of data and trying to look for anomalies or something along that you know some sort of uh, out particular output along that line uh then yeah i think the banking industry including ourselves are using it uh and have been for a while you know, from both a a fraud analysis uh as well as uh you know various uh network and discovery type of of tools that has it built in and and how much of that is true ai versus machine language and uh you know or a rule based uh you know it, it depends on the marketing of the of that tool right so uh you know they've been claiming ai for you know 15 years right and it's really just been rule based for for many of the stuff so uh but then if you look at you know what's really you know hit the news and become really uh kind of mainstream ai around a, a chat gpt type of solution uh and and how you, how we're doing those i i think banks are being uh, and probably other organizations as well as being more cautious around that uh because of fear of you know loss of pii or intellectual property and the, and those type of uh, of concerns so uh you know we're looking at it at this point and uh of how can we govern put governance around that uh because you know we're we're a bank we're highly regulated and and so you know right now we're discouraging it uh the use of a chat gpt type functionality until we can get better controls around it and have a better understanding of how we would really benefit from it other than somebody just playing with it and then potentially putting something out there that might not uh you know be uh uh information we would want out there so uh so i i think you know banks are very conservative and i think we're taking a conservative approach around that and then uh you know solely easing into it and seeing what the controls and tool sets it's coming along to help us and and help other organizations get apply governance and controls around uh systems like chat gpt 
Okay. That's that's a great point that you mentioned about governance, right? So what uh, prevents you from using chat GPT or, or rather when I say prevents you, what stops you? Is it the data privacy angle? Uh, mm-hmm. The fact that information might get leaked uh, or into a third party LLM like chat GPT, is that the primary concern? Yeah, I think that's the big concern is that someone would decide that uh, I, I don't know, like here's a bunch of, of data. So can you write a or create a graph of the, you know, some sort of usage based off of this data around it? Yeah. You know? And so now you toss up a file that's got 10,000 records of customer transactions that's got, you know, customer names or not. And, and now you just, you know, gave me a heart attack and more gray hairs and everything else. So, you know, it's those, those type of uh, uh, instances that we would be concerned about. So how can you apply governance off there? How can you put controls in place uh, in order to keep that from happening? And that's, that's where I think a lot of the concern comes around. Uh, you know, we, we've seen instances early on of someone taking a drawing for, uh, you know, some sort of CAD drawing and say, how can you, you know, make better improvements off of it? Well, that CAD drawing is, is you know, protected by a patent. And then now you're, uh, now you have intellectual property that's out there and, and potentially falsified your patent because it's now out in the uh, public d- domain. So, uh, you know, so those are areas that we have to be concerned about. Okay. And what about these open source LLMs then? I mean, they have, they're in the market and they are, we've seen they are quite capable. For example, uh, Mistral, the, the French uh, company, they launched uh, multiple open source versions. And there's one particular version called Mistral Medium, which almost, it, it's pretty close to the GPT-4 uh, capabilities, which is the state-of-the-art LLM. Uh, so, so a lot of enterprises at least are kind of adopting the open source LLMs. How how will a bank look at using an open source software? Yeah, you know, I, I think a lot of areas, you know, open source is being used throughout, you know, all companies and, and you know, being able to take that in and put it in your own, uh, you know, context and within your own environment where it's protected that way. Uh, is a more viable solution because then now you're uh, you have more controls off of it. You know it's not being a shared solution. Uh, you know, it, it, being open source, you would have access to the source code if there's tweaks or something like that because you think that you know there's some sort of bias or something, some issue with the rule uh, uh, or in the logic. You would be able to kind of tweak that and hopefully make it better, and then you know. Uh, send that back out to the open source community. And you can yeah. also vet it a lot better to make sure that something's not being leaked out. But, uh, you know, I, I think having that isolated uh, environment is going to get a lot more organizations to where they, they'd be open to it. And then it's a matter of then the resource, hardware resources, you know, whether you bring that in or if you're doing it up in a cloud instance off of AWS or Azure or something along that line, and then what you know? What's the overall cost of doing that? But uh, you know, I I can see especially uh, you know doing like data analysis and then taking that in and then doing something with that would be uh, you know a very good usage of that, similar to like a Microsoft Copilot or or some other instance where you have an isolated um, uh, data set that you're work, working off of that's not being shared with other data. Makes sense. Interesting that you brought in Microsoft Copilot. So, have you enabled that in your organization? Is it no. available for you? no, not <laughs> so no, no generative AI altogether. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but how, how do you enforce it? I mean, I understand Microsoft Copilot is all about subscription. You can avoid, but ChatGPT is the browser based, and like ChatGPT, there are a lot of browser based AI applications are available today. How do you enforce it? Because you'll have to actively monitor these URLs and block them mm-hmm. at an org level. Is that how it works? Right. Yeah. We're, uh, you know, our firewall came out pretty quickly with a, <laughs> uh, uh, a category for that. So we got that checked. You know, we got uh, for a deny, we have specific URLs that we know are top level domains of them. Uh, and we're doing it not only at the desktop 
level, but also at the, you know, the enterprise firewall level. So that way, you know, someone's off network that, uh, you know, they can't get to it off network as well. So. Wow. And I'm not sure if you are seeing this in the market. There are a lot of these uh, smaller AI apps that can run locally on edge devices without mm -hmm. any internet connectivity. Uh, how do you see the role of these applications in in a, in a highly regulated environment like banks uh, because as a as an employee imagine if i'm working uh, in a bank i would definitely uh, be more productive if i can have uh, a chat gpt type but something that could run locally within my desktop how would you see the adoption of such uh, technologies so yeah so i think depending on what they're trying to accomplish, it would go through our normal onboarding process for any other application. Uh, and, and then we would, you know, if it was approved, we would allow, you know, specific access to the users that would need access to that. And so, um, and then, you know, basically we would still containerize it within the environment and then make sure that it's only doing what it needs to be doing and not, uh, not going out. Um, you know, I, I've kind of, I'd also be questioning on how much of that is truly AI versus a uh, a rule based or machine learning, you know, application in general. So, you know, we'd be wanting to look at well, what's the models and what's your process and how does it actually work and and dig into that a little bit deeper. Uh, but basically, it would go through our our general architectural review of this is a. Uh, a business need and here's the application that the business feels that they could use for it and, and then how uh, how it would fit in and, and the proper rights and permissions for that. Okay. Now, I'm going to put you on spot. There is this one uh, concept called the $100 million problem and I'm going to mm -hmm. uh, get your opinion on it. So this is a challenge, right? Imagine you are given $100 million today and you have to adopt generative AI. That's the task. And you are free to use that fund towards a particular problem that you want to solve in this whole adoption. What would that be? What is that where you could push all this money, uh, you can invest all this money, which will allow you to adopt Gen AI. And if that's one problem that you want to solve, where would that be? Mm. And what yeah. would that be? You know, it would be something, how can we provide some sort of uh, solution to to better enhance the customer experience? So it'd be some, how can we utilize AI from a client experience to provide them with better information? Maybe it's on investments. I know JP Morgan's doing, has a an AI model that is helping people invest. <clears throat> um, uh, you know, maybe it helps them, you know, define their budgets or, you know, looks at their transactions that they've done over the past, you know, 18 months and, and uh, you know, spit out a budget for themselves or, you know, heck, there might be a tool that does it already. I don't know. But, uh, you know, so it would be something to where uh, it would enhance the client side, but yet still provide the governance to make sure we're providing accurate data. Uh, non-biased data, and then um, uh, and still being able, you know, to have the full controls and processes mm -hmm. that we need as a security professional would want to make sure that you know the data is good and protected, and and uh, you know limited to just their that client's information and not sharing it throughout. You know, it's uh, we we've, we've seen time and time again that's going to be continue to be a challenge with these AI models that, uh, you know, under the right amount of pressure, they uh, they start to provide information that, you know, they don't want to, uh, you know, that they're not supposed to provide. And a recent study from uh, a research project from Cornell, uh, you know, did that <clears throat> and, uh, you know, basically came out to what they're calling the Moses II worm, you know, that was <laughs> developed by, uh, by AI. And so, you know, they, they basically forced their way in the AI and model decided that they didn't want to disappoint. So it eventually, you know, gave them the answers type stuff. So, you know, how do you prevent that from happening or how do you prevent uh, biasness from the coders and the programmers and, you know, and stuff getting in there and, 
you know, th those are the challenges. And if you had $100 million to kind of resolve that and provide a clean, uh, unbiased model that can help clients and then provide the proper security to it, that'd be what I would do with it. So, Okay, that's fantastic. And and probably if you want to double click on that, what I what I heard was that you want to invest that towards solving the AI adoption problem when it comes to enabling customers with newer technologies and 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 more a much better experience. So so following on that thread, imagine if you have two buckets in front of you to invest that money. One would be improve uh, employee productivity by adopting AI internally within the organization, and the other bucket is to uh, improve customer experience uh, by enabling by bringing in AI to 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 uh, to augment uh, the the overall experience that they might have with uh, your products. But what would that be? I mean, which of these two buckets takes a priority for for you or for a bank? Sure, I I would think the um, uh, I would still lean towards the customer side of things. Uh, because, you know, if, if you're providing such a good application for that, that's going to draw in more customers, which are going to build things up. And then uh, and then hopefully the uh, operational side of your uh, organization is uh, expandable and be able to handle that growth that comes in with that. And if not, you'd have to simultaneously, you know, be developing that or making those process improvements to allow for that expansion of the additional volume of additional customers. So I would, I'd still say the customer side because it would help your organization grow. Uh, whereas the other side might help you be more uh, operationally effective, which could maybe get you to where you get more growth. But I would think the other side would help draw more in and be more of a, uh, a, a client selling feature. Okay. Uh, makes sense. It, banks, on the other hand, have always been slow adopters of technology because uh, you would, I mean, unless and until it's a security product, you would be the first one to adopt. But when it comes to some of the other technologies like cloud, for example, it took some time for banks to uh, uh, come on, go get on cloud. Do you see that there will be a similar pattern with generative AI now? Uh, or do you think because the world is moving faster, you may probably take more faster steps uh, in adopting Gen AI. How, how does a financial institution like a bank look at uh, the adoption speed? Yeah, I think, and as we've seen with some of the bigger banks and investment companies in the financial services, you know, they have the the money and the resources to be on that bleeding edge of AI and develop those sort of things. I think the uh, the regional and smaller banks are going to take a, a little bit more time to do that. They might not have the financial resources to do the development from scratch, so they might take some more time to look in the uh, the fintech world to see on how they're you know the fintechs are bringing in or the core providers are bringing in AI that could benefit. Uh, the bank in order to uh, either be more efficient or drive more customers, whatever it might be. So. Uh, so I think it's going to be a little bit of a combination. I think the big guys, and they're already doing it, they're bringing in so solutions for that, whereas uh, uh, the uh, not so large and, you know, the, the medium regional and, and local banks and credit unions are going to be slower to uh, adopt because of, you know, what's available on the market and then, uh, you know, available resources and, and finances uh, to be able to, uh, you know, bring in those type of systems. Well, okay, that's uh, yeah. That definitely the big guys are moving faster. I mean, we saw JP Morgan also launched Doc LLM, which is an open source LLM that uh, uh, processes these large contract documents uh, much more effectively than GPT and other platforms. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think the big banks are definitely investing a lot as well, like you said, because of the firepower they have. Uh, what has been your personal favorite picks when it comes to AI products? I, I, I'm sure you might be using some AI products uh, on a personal front. And and uh, what are your personal picks, if at all, you're using them? Yeah, you know, I've 
I played around a little bit with ChatGPT to kind of help with uh, some presentations for, you know, some speeches to get some ideas off of there. I probably used about 40% of it, of the data, you nice. know, most of it was kind of, eh, you know, that's too generic and not detailed enough. But um, so out, really outside of that, I haven't played too much with it. I, I know a lot of the other capabilities, especially when you start getting into the video and audio components of it, that part looks a lot of fun and everything, but I really just haven't spent much time to, uh, uh, to do that. I've been kind of more absorbed with other areas and, and, you know, it's like, ah, I'll, I'll just see, keep watching what my peers are doing with it. And, and then, uh, you know, just kind of keep my finger on, uh, more of the security aspect of it versus the, uh, uh, the playfulness of it. So, Okay. And probably one last question, right? I mean, uh, because this is this is really fascinating for, for us from the technology world and from CIOs of other industries to understand how a bank looks at generative AI. According to you, are we in a hype cycle? Because you would have seen a lot of hype cycles mm -hmm. from in the last uh, uh, many years of your career. So, do you do you consider this as a hype cycle? Like we had crypto was the most recent hype cycle we had. Yeah, everyone was thinking about blockchain. <laughs> exactly, right? Crypto and and banks and blockchain. I think all your uh, all these are super uh, intertwined. What do you? What is your opinion on Gen AI? Are we in a hype cycle, or or do you think it's a real technology like internet itself? Yeah, I think it's going to grow, obviously, but it's definitely the new toy on the block, and so. You know, so it's like, oh, you know, everyone's all excited and some new fancy toy that's out there that's real, really kind of made it big. And the advancements are just, you know, it's growing every day, every week. And, you know, so there, there's going to be um, another probably year or so of it, I think, of a lot of it being in the news. And that's going to kind of calm down and then we'll actually start seeing some more quality uses of it and, and uh, better applications around it, and then some of the, you know, the FUD around the fear, uncertainty, and doubt will kind of calm down a little bit, and, and uh, you know, we'll find different efficiencies with it, and and how it's going to, you know, better improve businesses, and, and then how we can better utilize our current resources or additional resources at that point. So, yeah, I think there's definitely a little hype. I think it's kind of calming down a little bit, not much, but a little bit, but, you uh, it's going to be the buzzword for uh, uh, you know a while longer before the next big thing comes out. So, that, uh, yeah, which we don't know it could be AGA, but uh, yeah, you don't know what that's going to be. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah. No, this is fantastic. I mean, uh, like I said earlier at the beginning of this uh, uh, call, uh, we never had someone from the banking industry speak to us, and and to understand how relaxed you are with all this. Uh, <laughs> frenzy that is happening out there. Uh, my previous call was with uh, a CTO of, uh, of a company in the Bay Area. And uh, uh, the kind of problems that they had, they were just wanting to try everything absolutely new that's there in the market. Uh, but again, on when we come to a more regulated industry like bank, it's super fascinating to understand that uh, I, I'm more jealous of the the relaxed mindset that you have that you know what <laughs> for me customer security is utmost important for me the data security is utmost most mm -hmm. important uh so that's really eye-opening uh yeah. for, for us uh but but hopefully like you said uh things the more adoption it I mean, when you are able to adopt for your to improve customer experience that's going to be a real value to uh, uh to the business isn't it mm -hmm. yeah and you know we'll We'll get there. And, uh, you know, like I said, as we start finding more things and different ways to apply it and stuff. But, yeah, it's uh, not anything that we're rushing into. There's other areas that we're, you know, looking at. And, uh, and you know, you don't necessarily want to be on the bleeding edge all the time, especially when it comes to other people's money. So <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's the that's a that's a very good uh, uh, value to hold, uh, especially uh, the the thing that you're doing as a as a bank, uh, yeah. but this is fantastic. Uh, I think uh, I'd be super happy to connect back uh, in a few months' time and to understand if something has changed. Uh, really appreciate your uh, insights into how we uh, how banks are adopting technology, especially Gen AI. Uh, but yes, thanks for your time again, Mark. Uh, we no will problem. again connect back in a few months. Sounds great. Thanks for having me. 
Take care. You too.